let's use that as a bridge to talking about using radiation to enhance tissue. So this first came up maybe a year or two ago when when I was lamenting, it must have been two years ago, I guess, because I was kind of lamenting um, my Achilles tendon, which wasn't, I wouldn't say it was injured. I just had a little bit of tendonitis. Mm -hmm. It was just bugging me a little bit. You and me both, brother. And um, I know exactly what you mean. And uh, and, and so it was through that discussion yeah. that, that you, we, we got into what we're talking about now, yeah. um, which seemed crazy, you know, I just decided I didn't feel like driving to Houston all the time to undergo <laughs> therapy and my Achilles is fine now. I yeah. just did sort of standard therapy. But right. um, I've sent a, a few patients to you who have had similar injuries, mm -hmm. uh, both you know high hamstring tendinopathies, uh, Achilles tendinopathies. So, so talk a little bit about this idea. Sure. How prevalent is this type of treatment in Europe? You know, how sure. prevalent is it here? Right. So prior to probably 1970 or maybe 1980, it was very prevalent even in the US. Mm. It was very widely done. So this is kind of everyone I talk to them about it now, it sounds like I'm doing something experimental and radical. But if you go over to Germany, again, going back to ankylosing spondylitis papers in 19, 1898, uh, they've done, they do something like I hear between 20 and 50,000 patients a year in Germany. And there's tons of, it's mostly observational studies. There's very few randomized trials, but uh, low dose radiation for tendonitis, osteoarthritis, plantar fasciitis, all the ididies you can think of, bursitis. Um, a low dose of radiation has a similar anti-inflammatory effect to what you would get from a cortisone injection. And let's injection. define the dose. So now we're talking about very low dose, meaning 50 centigrade or 50 rads given uh, six times over two weeks. So three gray, 0.5 times six is three gray to the affected joint. Um, and uh, using a very low energy machine. So this is, especially in the case of someone who's got a hand, you're talking about electron beam radiation. Wait, sorry, let me just make sure I got that straight. Mm -hmm. You were giving 40 gray total to- A breast. A breast. And now for the Achilles, you're giving how much? Six, uh, three gray, six fractions of half a gray each. Okay, got it. So all six fractions combined is about the dose of one fraction for a- typical cancer. Got it. That'll kind of give you the okay. idea. And giving it in a superficial fashion where, especially if it's a hand, you only have a couple of, maybe a couple centimeters of thickness. So we use what's called electron beam therapy. The same linear accelerator when the electrons go and hit the tungsten target and make photons, if you remove the tungsten target, you just get direct electrons. And electron energy can be modulated to where you can treat a superficial skin cancer, you can treat a knuckle, I can treat a temple uh, squamous cell and not go into the brain. So these superficial things. And in the old days, before they had linear accelerators, I told you this goes back to the turn of the previous century, they had orthovoltage machines. And these basically created kilovoltage x-rays, not the megavoltage x-rays we use now. And all they could do was superficial stuff back then. And that's where it works very well. The dosage has changed tremendously, but these days with the modern, the biggest data comes out of Germany, half a gray three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for two weeks, just to the affected joint. And it has an anti-inflammatory effect very similar to either a, either a cortisone shot or an NSAID. And how many weeks is the course? Two weeks. That's so it? Monday, just Wednesday, six. Friday, six treatments. And the protocol is uh, what we typically follow, the German protocol is to wait 12 weeks. And you usually see, depending on the joint, somewhere between a 60 and 80% uh, success rate where the the pain is, if not zero, at least markedly decreased. And then after 12 weeks, the German protocol allows for a retreatment. And then at that point, you get up to 90 plus percent success in terms of reducing pain. And this is for joint arthritis? Arthritis, tendonitis, bursitis, plantar fasciitis is a really big one now that we're doing a bunch of. I've done probably close to 70 cases across the board. Which just is kind of remarkable year. because anybody who's had it, you know, I had it once back mm -hmm. in med school. So about tw exactly 25 years ago. Did you get it treated or was it just uh, No, it I mean, just I just resolve? went to PT and yeah. rolled on golf balls mm -hmm. and did the usual thing, but it, you know, it took months sure. to get better. It's such a big deal. So you're saying, so of the patients that are coming to see you with plantar fasciitis, mm -hmm. how many of these patients, how long have they been hurting, first of all? Many times for years. And in fact, my biggest cohort recently, which is still relatively new, I haven't done thousands of patients, like I can speak from decades of experience with cancer. We're talking about, you know, dozens to hundreds. Um, 
couple of surgeons that were having trouble standing and operating. They literally couldn't, uh, you know, couldn't perform their normal duties. Uh, six treatments to the to the fascia, and they're walking like nothing ever happened. How long after the last treatment did it take for them to experience? In the case of plantar fasciitis, it was almost immediate, like within within a week. Uh, I have other cases, especially when we do like knee arthritis. If there's a lot more pathology going on in a knee. Uh, I treated my own Achilles, which I can tell you about. It took two months or so. So it was almost, I was almost wondering if it was going to work or not. I was my own first patient before I offered to anybody. I treated like my a own true Achilles. Doctor. A true doctor. I was a physician heal thyself, right? Yeah. And so I literally jumped on the table because a colleague of mine had posted about it. He did his, he's a radiation oncologist in Florida. He tried it out. And so I was like, you know, I have the machine. I know this should work in theory. We just never taught about it in residency. Then I look at all the German data. There's tons of it. It's like, why do we not do more of this? And it, sure enough, like I, I'm actually my own personal case control study because I did steroids and PRP in my left Achilles. And then later on this past year, did the right side with only radiation and no steroids. And now I'm walking without a limp. And you obviously did the other side. Mm -hmm. No, no, actually I didn't. I didn't repeat because I did, the PRP actually finally did. So I had two cortisone shots and PRP in the left. And then a year later radiated the right. And so both of them are, are holding up pretty well so far. Got it. The other area that is of huge interest for me at least is the very, very high uh, hamstring mm -hmm. tendinopathies. So yes. that, that ischial tuberosity pain, very, very common for runners. Sure. Uh, seems to be anecdotally much more common in women than men based I've on only, pelvic anatomy. I've only treated women for some reason with yeah. that and they've all had tremendous results. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, it, so you're, it's still the same protocol. It's the three same gray protocol. over mm -hmm. six treatments over two weeks. Exactly. For any type of an arthritis, uh, you're essentially lysing all the macrophages and, all, and you're eliminating that cytokine storm that would have normally resulted. It's very similar to what cortisone does, but the difference is it seems to be based on the studies we've seen, it's much longer lasting than a cortisone shot. Not to mention the fact that you're not necessarily violating the capsule and causing other, you know, like in the case of an Achilles tendon, you run, run the risk of rupturing it with multiple injections. So totally non-invasive. You just get up on the table. Most of my patients go right back to whatever they were doing, and many of them are actually quite athletic, and they don't take any breaks during treatment. They just do what they do. They're still working out. And just tell I've seen, obviously, patients with debilitating keloids. Mm -hmm. What does it look like after the treatment? So the treatment has to be adjuvant after a surgical resection. If you just radiate an intact keloid, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Because you don't have the, the DNA mechanisms of, you know, a, a weak cancer cell that can be wiped out. So kind of like doing a <laughs> lumpectomy. But, but, but obviously, if the surgeon just did the resection, the keloid's coming they, right the, back. The fibroblasts go crazy and they roar right back. So in order to do it right, yep. a lot of people do it and they have multiply recurrent rate, uh, treatment, uh, keloids even after treatment. You have to do the first treatment the same day as surgery. So you're just not letting those fibroblasts get a chance to have any sort of a foothold. So I would literally arrange it with the dermatologist to do the resection, send them straight to me. So we get the first dose in that day. And ultimately the cosmetic outcome is as good as if they didn't have radiation, that you'll see the scar wherever it is. We get sometimes kids that have had acne scars all over their chest that have these bumps everywhere and they were all resected flat and you radiate them, they just stay flat. You don't see any sort of dermatitis from radiation. I think what's amazing to me is I I just think there's too many people that don't know this, right? I think there's too many people that are walking around sort of suffering right. either from something that's cosmetically upsetting, like a huge keloid, uh, especially on a visible part of their body. Right. Uh, obviously, the people, everybody listening can relate to some nagging injury, tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, mm -hmm. Achilles tendinopathy, hamstring tendinopathy. Uh, these things nag for years at times. Yeah, I think the, the the data was showing some like one in seven people in the country are afflicted and the the uh, socioeconomic costs are massive. And there's also, you know, going to your whole uh, uh, quality of life and longevity bias. I mean, we're talking about something that can really affect someone's ability to exercise at all, and it can lead to exacerbation of other medical problems. So it's a huge problem. And do we, do we have a sense of the durability of this? So for yes. example, I have a little bit of um, osteoarthritis at my AC joint on right. the right. right. Um, it's it barely bothers me, but every once in a while, if I'm yeah. doing something really violent overhead, you know, reaching for something, or I play a ton of football with my son, 
it'll bug me for like three weeks. I'll take right. a little bit of Advil. It's fine. Right, right. If I did a treatment there, would it be done or am I doing this treatment annually? How, how would it work? And that's, there's a lot of variability there depending on what the actual anatomy that's causing it. If there's, you know, uh, if it's literally just a straight up osteoarthritis case with no physical structural issue, I've seen cases, I've now again, I've only been doing this about a year, so I don't have the 25 years of experience I do with cancer, but I've talked to, there's a, there's a couple of doctors who do this routinely. They've been doing it for 20 years in LA. One of them treated his own neck, shoulder, and spine. He's 15, I think he said 15 years out, anecdotal obviously, but never had to retreat himself. Typically the German studies allow for two treatment, two retreatments. Because the dose is so low radiobiologically, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do it. I don't know about annually, but you know, maybe every few years or something like that. But there seems to be a fair bit of data that a lot of patients who don't have other struct, like a like a knee that's bone on bone, it might only last them yep. a month or le- it may not even work. But uh, for the other ones, like the, the hands and all, it seems like it's certainly longer lasting than any sort of cortisone shot. But I think months are very reasonable and probably years for most people. Now, what about non-osteoarthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis and things like that. Is there any reason to believe that this could help with sort of the debilitating injuries that those patients... So I've done three cases of rheumatoid arthritis and one guy that had a gouty arthritis as well, because again, it's a systemic disease. I'm not going to pretend to be able to cure that with a local treatment, but to a single knuckle that's driving them nuts, it's still an, an, an inflammatory process. And yes, it works great for that. So I've done that. So if a patient has rheumatoid arthritis mm-hmm. where they're really experiencing a lot of deformation in the hands, yes. you you think you can help uh, that that patient with, with the local part of it? Yes, which is it won't reduce the deformation necessarily because a lot of that is, you know, longstanding. And if they've but got- But if they were treated early enough in the course of yes, the disease. I think it, it, that, there's no strong data to support that, but I don't see why it wouldn't work personally. And it definitely, from a purely palliative standpoint, just to reduce pain, it, it does work. You just have to, you have to manage their expectations. What are some other examples of where this could be used, in your, at least mm-hmm. in your experience so far, in terms of reducing uh, reliance on NSAIDs or mm-hmm. opioids or other things like that? Uh, tennis elbows become a big one, mm-hmm. doing, doing several of those. Um, and how much do you, how far down the arm do you irradiate? I would, I, I base it on where the patient, when I, I'll, if they palpate, and if, they, if they're getting pain down into the brachioradialis, and if it's, if, it's, if it's sort of radiating further down, I'll treat a larger field. Because okay. again, there's no reason not to. Yep. Bigger fields are better. No need to be. And again, it's just six gray. Or just three, three gray. Three gray. Three yeah. gray. So, and again, that's three gray locally. Yep. And it's, an, it's to an area where there's no vital organs nearby. The total body dose is negligible. It's like, it's like getting a CAT scan initially for the rest of the body. So I would treat definitely the joint capsule and a little bit of the distal humerus and the, and the proximal uh, radius and, and whatever else. But if, if it's hurting larger, I'll just treat a larger field. And in that case, we use opposed lateral beams. So the patient will just lay there. The beam will come in from one side and rotate around from the other side. And we treat them both because that way we get the same type of homogenous dose we do with our cancer patients. But if it was if it was more distal, if it's more, if I, we'd, I've actually done several piano players that have de Quervain's tenosynovitis in their wrist, and because when you're stretching to play those notes, all my music, I'm a musician as well. All my, all my musician friends are coming to me, and the and the uh, the wrist pain is going away. And that actually, again, very quickly, my biggest patient cohort so far are former patients because they don't have radiophobia. They're like, I've been through 80 grade of my prostate. This is a joke. And I'm bringing my wife with me. And half the times the wives sit there for their daily treatment anyway, and they start chatting in the lobby. So we do the wife's hand the same time we're doing the husband's prostate. And for the most part, the hands, the wrists, the elbows, it's very rapid. In the case of the tendonitis, like my Achilles, it was a couple of months, but that's not outside of the window of what we're, we've been conditioned to expect from all the German studies. So it can be not as immediate of a, re- of a relief as a steroid shot, but it does seem to be more durable. 